How many times in my computer's life is it going to be taken apart and put back together? Ah! <laughs> I swapped out the fans, and then I swapped them for some light-up fans, and then went back to my Nartua fans, and, and now I'm putting this in there. I reapplied thermal paste twice because I messed up the first time, and... <laughs> I don't know, but welcome to my crazy world of the tech channel called youtube.com slash what would Josh do? And yes, the DEW stands for Mountain Dew because back when I created the channel, I was in the army and when they drew my blood, it was the color of Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh my God. So, so here we are. Noctua released a brand spanking new product and then they sent it to me. Like... Could you believe that? Noctua freaking hooked me up. So this is the brand new NH-U12A. This has been in the making for several years or a few years now. And it uses their brand new fan that is crazy fast, smaller than a 140, performs better than most 140s. And they put it in a cooler with two fans on it. So let's open the smaller box. So the exciting thing about Noctua is they've been doing this for a long time. And they're really, really good at what they do. So they've got AM3, AM4, LGA511. I'm a noob, okay? I'm a noob. They've got all the things in here. <laughs> uh, and then there's common parts such as your thermal paste, which is the NTH1, which we have the upgraded NTH2 in-house. So we're gonna use that instead. You got your little Noctua brand that I can throw on my mesh if I see and let the world know that I have a Noctua cooler in there, which they can see anyway. So in here we've got some a splitter. So in case you have one CPU fan header, you can go ahead and plug it in and then plug both fans into the here. And then you have a low noise adapter so it will turn the RPMs down and make them quieter. And then here's another low noise adapter. So you can hook it up like this and then hook your two fans in there and you're, you're, you're Gucci. Look at, look at, here's the new one that just came with it. Here's my old H1 that came with my D15 cooler. And here is the NTH2. So we're going to be using this. New paste. All right. So I haven't opened this before. I don't know how this is. Well, I'm already tearing stuff up. You know what? We're already there. We've already tore stuff up. Let's tear stuff up even more. Like it's, we've come too far. And we've already done it. So, oh. Okay, looks like this might just slide. Oh, oh, that's heavy. I did not expect that to be that heavy. And there's a the little cover for the bottom. Make sure you do not secure that onto your power, onto your CPU. All right, it's still kind of big, but it's not nearly as big as the NHD 15. So you've got your A12X25 fans, 2000 RPM. Huh, interesting. It's going to go this way. And that's going to exhaust. Oh, ah, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, because you wouldn't be able to see the other side. See, I'm used to the D15 where it's got the split in the middle. And you can see the direction. So it's weird seeing this fan facing this way and this fan facing that way. But it's perfect. And it's, it's already on there, too, which is awesome. And then you got seven heat pipes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then seven on this side. So hopefully you can tell as someone that's a noob, and this is the first computer I've put together, uh... I did a okay job at cable management <laughs> for all the fans and splitters and everything. I mean, I think I did okay. So let's get the bottom filter off. It's not necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this filter out so the filter can be gone. And then let's take off the side panel. And there's the tempered side panel removed. And there we go. So you can see I've got two 140s, two 140s, a 120. That's the AX1225, AX and I have one on here as well because with my Trident Z RAM, I'm not able to mount the 140. I think it's a 150, like 140 fan, 150 frame. I'm not able to close my side panel. So I have to put a smaller fan on there, and I went to the bad boy. <laughs> So that's exciting. I'll actually have an extra one of these for another computer that needs a 120 mil fan in it. Uh, and then maybe I'll take this cooler and give it to someone that that's, uh, <laughs> needs a better cooler. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get... As you can see, there's just not much room in there. So 
let's uh let's get this massive thing out of there and i'm what i'm hoping is that the new one is just as good as this one i mean part of me wants to say well that's smaller and this has two different sections and more errors get uh, part of me wants to say that this one's going to be better uh, honestly, I probably got temperatures around 45 to 55 degrees while playing game and using the processor to about half power. It's an i7 8700K. Uh, so, and then while editing videos using 100% CPU usage, I peaked at, at uh, 83 degrees Celsius on this cooler. So the hottest I ever ran this CPU was 83 degrees with an NHD 15 and a modified AX1225 on the front. Anyways, let's stop talking. Let's tear this thing apart. Let's put the new cooler in and see what it brings to the table. All right, so once again, we're back and we've got our fans. Let's take these off. You know, oddly enough, when I use Fan Expert to control my fan speeds, it shows, you know, because it's a CPU fan and then CPU other. So it shows them as one. And when I have this one going at 2000 RPM, it says that my CPU fans are going at 2000 RPM. Well, this middle fan is only a 1500. So just little things like that where both of my fans will say, you know, the same speed is like a win to me, you know? <laughs> All right, so we've got them unscrewed. Let's take this off. And there we go. I think that was a better thermal job it made contact with the entire chip and it's not like super caked up on there. So that was pretty good. So well, let's go ahead and clean up all this thermal paste and put the new one in there. All right. So we have the thermal paste cleaned off all the way off the cooler in that. So I'm going to borrow the cap. Actually, I don't think I need to. I have it. Sweet. I probably could borrow the same stuff for the new one, but I'm going to play it safe and not do that. And if we can remember the orientation, we had this thing facing that way. All right, so the Z390H, which is the motherboard I have, is for LGA115... 1151 for 8th gen and 9th gen Intel processors. So... We are definitely going to need this right here and then this. So let's go ahead and attach this to the back. And it's pretty clear. You've got like a little metal part here. It's just, it looks like it's going that way. So just put that in there like such. It's almost, you know, foolproof. As long as you don't do like the AMD and you have an Intel or the Intel and you have an AMD. So then... These go like this. I can only imagine how many months and years it took them to make a universal way that fits almost every single setup. That's pretty extreme. That's awesome. Then we have our bag here. To make this as little as confusing for you as possible, in the picture here, it's got the clips. So facing the other way, these are opposite. It's going to be blowing air out the top of your case and sucking air from where your graphics card would be, which to me isn't ideal. So I'm gonna have it this way. And then you just wanna make sure that the bars are facing outward. So it's like, it's got a little curve, which is how this is, it's got a curve. We're just gonna screw them down, apply thermal paste and attach the cooler. So actually it's different. So with the D15, it would bolt in like this, right? And then the air would go this way. Well, this is actually different. If you can look over here and see that both of them are facing down, but the air would go that way. This time it's opposite. So I need to take these and flip them around. All right, so now our fan can be bolted with this screw and this screw onto here. And the air will blow from the front to the back and it'll be good. Take the little plastic cover off. You can take the paste that came with it, but we're gonna be using the upgraded NTH2. If you're like me and new to this, that may not look like enough, but it is. You definitely want this fan on the side that's going to be going out the back of your case. So air is going to be blowing. If you see this side of the fan, air is going to be blowing that way. If you see 
so it's blowing out. If you see it this way, it's going to be sucking in. So we want it this way since this is the back of our case. So I didn't think of it right away, but you have to take the fans off so you can get to the screws. All right, so it's bolted in securely. Let's go ahead and put our fans back on here. I sure am. Are you recording right now? Yes. All right, there's the finished product. We're going to go ahead and uh, cut the video here and go to putting it into the case. I can already tell you that this doesn't overlap the back like the other one did. And I can see my RAM, which I could not see before. So part of me says, well, it's a smaller cooler. It's not going to perform as well, but we'll find out. If I get even close to what I have with the D15, I would prefer this because I can see my RAM and it just looks better and cleaner inside my computer without that humongous cooler on there. So let's get it all back together and see how it performs. Okay, and here's the after. I can already tell you putting it back together, there was a lot more room to work with. It was easier to plug everything in. As you can see, you can clearly see the RAM sticks. It didn't overhang on the back of the motherboard for the IO ports and everything. It's just, it's a lot cleaner in there. And it doesn't touch the power, the almost touch the graphics card anymore like it did before. And nothing else was changed except the cooler. Fans are in the same spot they were before. Everything's the same. So what we're going to go ahead and do is press the power button for the very first time and see if I plug everything in correctly. Please excuse my dust. It's, it's a dusty area. That's really nice seeing my RAM and you can't see it, but on my main monitor over here, it did post. So we see that screen. I actually put my graphics card in, then realized I didn't put up my SATA ports. So my hard drive and my SSD, <laughs> I have an NVMe, but I also have a 2.5 SSD and 3.5 spinning disc. And uh, yeah, I didn't have them hooked up and they're in such an inconvenient spot that you have to unplug the graphics card <laughs> to get to them. So, oh, that was... That was kind of frustrating. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click on this little fan expert thing. We're gonna open up fan expert four. And if my fans are acting funky because it doesn't quite know much about the system yet. So fan expert, it's gonna say that my fans changed. Fan has changed, please run auto tuning. So, and it has a little blue box. So it knows everything changed. So let's go ahead and let this run. And I'm noticing about 34, and that's what I got before. Uh, with fans at 100% full speed blasting, as loud as they can go, uh, I was getting about 26 at the very lowest, but I'd usually see 27 to 29. So maybe we'll get close to that with this thing, maybe not. But even at 34, I mean, well, the standard fan profile, that's what I got before with a bigger cooler on there, 34 degrees on dashboard usually and again that was with standard not turbo or full speed i do miss my light up fans what i'm gonna do is just use my rgb header that i have on my ac's motherboard and just put in a strip of rgb lights so the inside of my case lights up i wish the fans lit the case up i like seeing my components but it is, at least I can see my RAM now. I couldn't see my RAM before. Now it's all pretty and it's full glory and everything. So what you could do in Fan Expert, which is really cool, is if you don't know which fan is which, you press the little button and then it says the selected fan will operate at full speed and everything else will either stop or go silent. So everything's gonna either turn off or go really quiet. And those are gonna go at full speed. A nice gentle hum. It's not... That's not loud at all, actually. It's almost like I have the low noise on or something. What I usually do is keep mine on turbo in case the CPU ramps up and it needs more cooling. It can go ahead and do that. So I usually keep mine on turbo. And we're about 34 degrees at an idle right now with the fans on turbo. I would say I'm getting either the same or very similar results as the NHD 15. But my cooler is way smaller. I have more clearance between the top fans. I've got more clearance between that back fan. I can see my RAM. I've got more clearance on my graphics card there. Just looks better. And I can put my tempered glass side panel on, 
which I'll do here in a second, and it, it, it's awesome. Let's put this. In, let's put it on. All right, so side panels on. Everything's back to the way it was. Long story short, I'm super happy with the NH-U12A. I feel like it works better in my case than the NH-D15 did. Provides more room to work around in. I can see my RAM in all of its pretty glory. I'm getting temperatures I got before, literally the same, I'm sitting at 32 at the lowest, and I just cranked them up to full speed, and I'm just gonna wait, and it will probably go down, and as the thermal pace takes time and settles, the degrees will drop a couple. As the pace settle, it will take about 200 hours for that thermal pace to completely settle and cover the entire chip, and then my temperatures will, I, I'm, get, I'm gonna get the same exact temperatures in a much smaller cooler. I, I can't say anything, like there's nothing else to say. I I love it, I'm sold. Definitely pick this up if you're in a similar situation. If you've got a bigger case and you don't have RGB RAM and everything works better, then get the bigger cooler. But for me, this works better, I like it better. I'm super freaking happy. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I've got more tech videos to come. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you're not doing so already. I say that because YouTube has been automatically disabling comments on videos because of the huge thing with child... Oh, with all that crap that's going on, they've been disabling comments. So if you have a thought, you want to reply something, Go ahead and reach me on Twitter, reach me on Instagram. It's the two places I use. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out.